Hi. Well, I've come into the kitchen now, so that um, it's still a beautiful day out there, but I need to think about what I'm going to have for tea tonight. Important. This is in my life in any case. Chicken. Okay, got some chicken here. Kind of put it into the slow cooker. A bit battered and beaten, but it works marvellous. Now we've got that in there. Put this into the bin. Wash the hands. There's raw chicken. Don't want to try not to spoil anything from the raw chicken anywhere else. Now, I thought we'd have some, or I'd have some potatoes. A couple of potatoes. I like everything chunky. I don't like it all cut up, you know, fine. The chunkier it is, the better it is. It's a, it's, it's a, it's going to be a curry. <clears throat> so, it doesn't have to be finite. It's, at all, no. A couple of, I think just one potato today will do. Now, the carrots, what is it with carrots? When you buy them, they look great. A day or two after you buy them, they start looking yuck. They don't look great, do they? So, we'll just quickly peel that off. If it was okay and looking really good, if it was really fresh, then I just wash them, cut them, put them in. I don't mind if they're the skins. The skins are good. The skins have got lots of vitamins, same as in potatoes. The most amount of vitamins are in the potato skin. Now, that should be okay. So, just take the end off. Off. Cut it again and again and then let's that. cut through like that. That's it. Put it in. Done. Now people say sweets. They're so hard I can't even whip them. Want my secret? Bar sweet at least a week to a week and a half before you're going to use it. Go softer. See, look, look at that. No problem whatsoever. And mind in your fingers and everything else. Cut the skin off very carefully if you're not used to doing it. Now you can either do it like I've done it, or you can do it this way. The trouble I find doing it this way, sometimes it takes off more than you, you actually want it to take off. But inevitably you get the bit around the bottom, so oh, that's not me, whip bound like so. Uh, so this is going to be a, just a basic um, curry, nothing fancy. Cut it up, mix it up, turn it on. That's it. Some might say, why aren't you having a salad on a lovely day like today? Well, it may be lovely, but believe me, by this evening, that temperature is going to drop. Now, a bit of king bone, maybe a bone of content for some people. Lentils. I've got green, split green peas, lentils, um, pearl barley, a good mixed job. Now, I put normally about a handful in there. Anything I do in a casserole or a stew, that's what's going. Now, I was going to put some paprika in there, and I changed my mind. Uh, what I'm going to do is put some garlic in. Now, normally, I would use a whole garlic, the whole thing itself. Not just one clove, the whole garlic. Proven to be good for the heart, and... At my age, you need, you need it. So what I do, 
I've got garlic, but I'm being lazy today. I'm going to take two spoons. That's the equivalent to a good sized garlic. It's called very lazy chopped garlic. You get it from Tesco's. The only thing I don't like about it is I think it's a vinegar they use to preserve it in. And I'm not, I don't like vinegar. But once it's been cooked, even with anything else and flavoured up, you won't even notice it's there. Now, the other thing I use, I grew some leeks this year. They weren't successful. I grew them in the wrong place. They were planted out at the wrong time. This is my leeks. They're like spring onions. But I refuse to waste them. So I'll top and tail them. Cut these up into about half to one inch chunks and put in there. Now, I'm a big advocate of onions or the onion, any of the onion variety, the onion, the onion species, etc., to use for winter to help combat against colds, flu. Yes, I've had my flu jab. Have you had yours yet? Just top and tail them all. Take off the outer sheaf of leaf because that normally goes very dry and not tasty at all. A bit more there. And one last one. There again, do the same. The sun's going in at the moment outside. I can, I'm in the kitchen by the window. And there's some clouds starting to build up. But at the moment, not too much. But I think at the end of the day, we're going to have some clouds. Now, if like me, you can't make your own curry, I buy it in a jar. Now, there again, I'm not one for wanting to spend lots of money. If it's flavoursome, it's wholesome. That's veg, chicken. Nothing wrong with that at all. Chicken's good. Vegetables, a must. I've got more than my five a day veg in there already. Now, this is Hearty Food Company curry sauce. They do a sweet and sour sauce and a tomato and basil. They all taste really great. I've tried different sorts. From expensive ones down to these, which are cheap, which are Tesco's cheapest. These are something like 55, 55 or 60p for a jar. 440 grams. Now, if that's not value, I don't know what is. And in today's society, in today's financial climb, we need to be thinking of value. So, give that a good shake. Then, move you over. Just literally pour the whole lot in. Give it a good tap. Get it in there. There you go. Let it spin. I love using wooden spoons. I mean, you can get anything better than a wooden spoon. Wooden spoon, wooden spatula. Doesn't cause any, any problems with your saucepans, your frying pan, anything else. The nice thing about these, this is a home tech slow cooker. It's got an off, low, high and keep warm. This is old. This must be getting on for 20 odd years old, if not a bit older. It still works great, no problem. Nice ceramic interior. That's enough for two people. So all I do then is mix it around as that starts to cook the juice from the vegetables and the juice from the chicken will get into here and also the curry powder, the curry sauce will start to loosen up and that will then spread around. Now just wipe around you don't want there's a curry sauce around the top of your 
Esto lo hace acá. Wash my hands again. And then, flip the top on, turn it on, and we'll put it on low because there's plenty of time. It's quarter past 11 um, on a Friday morning. So there's plenty of time for this to cook on slow. And if by five o'clock, that's four, four and three quarter hours time, it's not cooked enough, I'll whack it onto high for an hour and it'll be ready for me for half past six, six o'clock to half past. So not a problem. So right over here. And that's my tea now done. Right, we'll go on to something else in a moment and uh, we'll see what else we can do. In the meantime, let's have a quick look window. And yeah, the clouds are beginning to, to cloud up. So it's supposed to be going to be a bit variable today. It's getting windy. So you see the old bananas are starting to sway around again. So any case, I'll catch you in a moment. Right, so I'm back in the kitchen. I've made myself a cup of tea, most important. Now I was thinking, to cut these vegetables up, you need a really sharp knife. Now, I go to so many different places and I hear, oh, I can't get my knife sharp and, you know, they're blunt. Or I go to people's parents or friends and such and they're working hard to try and cut through. And you go up to it and go, not this blunt. Never ever run your finger along like that unless you want to lose the end of your finger. Just brush it very carefully across the top. Slight angle and just brush it. If that feels really sharp, you know it's sharp. So, how do I sharpen knives? Do I use a grinding wheel? Okay, I'm working on a grinding wheel out there on that um, tumble dryer motor. So yes, I will be using one of them but only when I have to. Now, I prefer to use a good old fashioned sharpening iron. My grandfather used a sharpening iron and I believe that you can't get better. Now, a lot of people say, how do you use it? Some people use it like this. Okay, that's fine. But be careful. When you draw it back like that, you don't sort of go straight across you like that and cut yourself open or you don't take your knuckles off. Very nasty. Who wants to spend five hours in A&E? I definitely don't. Life's too short. So, when you're doing it, one will be away from you. The point will be away from you like that. Someone's at the door. Right, I'm back again. So, there's a parcel at the door. I'll show you that parcel later. So, draw it away. Always draw it away from you firmly. Don't draw the sharp knife towards you, the point toward the, the blade, the cutting blade towards you. Draw it away. Now that should be nice and sharp. So, when you get a bit more efficient, you can just whip it along like this, and you know you're gonna be fine. They don't need loads of sharpening. They just need enough so that they'll cut easy through whatever you want to cut. Meat, vegetables, makes no difference. There you go. Now a lot of people say to me, my knife is so blunt I can't even cut a piece of bread. Well, the problem is you bloody get too blunt. Once a week, or in fact, quite like me, Every time I use a knife, before, once I've washed it, before I put it away, I'll just hone it, which is what it's called, honing. I'll just hone it a couple of times on the stone, like that. Now, that's one of the ways I sharpen a knife. The other way is turn it upside down, stand it on a board, and then using either side, Cut inside down, either side, draw it up. That can save your fingers if you're not experienced or you're not sure about 
doing it this way. Okay. My grandfather used to be able to sort of do this like this within seconds. A knife, just like this one, was really sharp. Now, I've seen three different size knives. But what happens when you've got a chopper? Chopper's great for cutting up meat, you can, or even herbs, anything. In fact, if you want it small, you can just work it like this on it, put it on the board, hand on there, and just tip it back and forth so that it chops as you go round. We've seen them on the telly doing it. Hold this one down solid and let it rock. Hence the reason why you'll see the blade has got a rocker action. That's it. It can rock. Now the thing with this one is, yes, Don't try Pavado and try and be quick with it. Always do it this way. This is the most dangerous tool in the game in the in the drawer. When you're chopping with it, mind your fingers. When you're cutting with it, mind your fingers. When you're sharpening it, mind your fingers and everything else. And, blow, and men, you most people know what I'm talking about. So be careful. Now that's the reason why I don't like this one. As you can see, it can slip, but because it's got the guard, it doesn't hold me any arm. That's why I'm not an advocate of this. I'd say you'll see some chefs do this, a lot of chefs do it this way. I prefer my way, which is this. I know it's not going to slip. As I pull it this way, this arm goes this way. So I'm doing, I'm drawing in both different directions, and I'm holding it at a distance from me, at least 12 to 18 inches away from me, but make sure you can control it and do that. Now that is razor, I mean razor sharp. If I shave with this, I take half my face off. Remember, once you've done this, you're going to most probably get a few little iron filings, little tiny minute microscopic filings of iron, because after all, you're shaving it. That's what honing is, you're shaving it off. Wash them. You don't need to wash them vigorously. Just literally run them under the hot tap. Give them a good run under the hot tap. Wash them filings off and then when you dry them, make sure you double your towel and you always dry with the blood with the pointed side or the sharp side, whichever it is, away from you. That's the sharp side. Sharp side is up here and the pointed side away from you no problems well i hope that's of some use to some of you if you liked it um, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up it does help the channel it helps me grow the channel and uh, so i can put even more content in you never know i might be able to get a nice um, video camera at some point um, in a bit so i'm going to go have a look at this package in a moment and I'll take you with me, but this will be on a different video. It will be on a full video. So for now, take care and be safe.